Hey YouTube, welcome back to Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango W3CT, your good old friend Jack. Back out here once again in the garage. It's getting to be really, really cold outside, but I got the heater running and hopefully my microphone is set to not pick up background noise. So you won't be hearing a lot of the uh, air running. Today we're here to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart and probably yours also, antenna tuners, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about using antenna tuners. Do I use antenna tuners? And uh, is there a need for an antenna tuner? I'm sure there's always a need for it. Let's get started right after this. All right, guys. So I was uh, lucky enough to be talking to Guzizu. Okay, now you guys have heard of Guzizu. They uh, are around all kind of YouTube channels. And I told them one video I've never really seen and I kind of looked for it was a comparison between their two different ATU100 antenna tuners. That's what this video is about. It's a comparison between two different antenna tuners. And we're going to talk a little bit about antenna tuners. And I found some key differences already between the two different tuners. So we're going to talk about that. So right here in front of me are the two boxes that Guzizu has sent me okay so they did send these to me I did not pay for these and I'm just making that perfectly clear to you okay these were sent to me for a review for review units so we have two different models here and why do they have two different models because there's two different price points okay so let's go ahead with the first model we're gonna open this up and then we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons so I'm gonna be on my second camera here and we'll see how this goes back and forth so this model here is the model that requires you to have power to it, okay? Now they say the power ratings on this thing are from, I believe it was 9 to 13.8 volts this thing will run on, okay? I think that's what it was. If not, I'll put it in, in the description below what the exact voltages are. So they send you a power cable with it, all right? with the little jack, okay, I'll put it down here on this camera, with the little jack, and just stripped in, so you can wire this to whatever, okay? I have a plan on wiring this, and I don't have any here, my wife is actually picking them up later on, but I bought nine volt connectors to wire this to, to see if I can wire it in. Now, what else I bought though, for it, I went on Amazon, and I ordered this cable, okay? And this cable, the description will be in the uh, the link will be in the description below for this cable. What I did with this was I hooked it to my little battery uh, that I have for my QMX, and I could power this thing directly with that. Okay, so in the back here, it just simply plugs right into power, and I can plug it into there. All right. Now, so this is the. Uh, ATU 100 HF Auto Tuner. The model numbers, I'll tell you what, I'll put the model for this one right above, and the links to purchase these from Amazon will be in the descriptions below, okay? So uh, you can actually purchase these things. But I want to show you the differences to make sure you're buying the proper one, because when I was looking, I, I probably would have bought the wrong one just solely based on price alone. Don't ever buy ham equipment on price alone. Okay, so the first one here is, as I said, powered, okay? The next one I want to show you, and I'm going to show you the differences. Don't worry, that's, that's coming up here, so stick with me. Hang in there, okay? Look, I didn't even take it out of the box yet. So you get a USB, looks like a USB, yep, USB-C, it's a standard USB charging cable, okay? Because this one, the difference, first of all, with this one is, It has an internal battery. Now, why is that important? Well, if you're out portable and you're just working somewhere and you don't have any power, this one actually has a built-in battery, okay? Now, if you look right on the front here, you can see where it says battery and there's actually charge. I'm surprised there's some charge on it. Okay, so that's on the battery power. Or you can do line. So line, again, in the back of this thing, you can actually plug this one in also. Right? Plug it into your battery. But on the front here, what's nice about this, it has the 
USB-C type charging port here. Now what that charging port allows you to do is obviously plug it into your computer and charge the internal battery in this thing. Now you can already see from the faces of these things, they are just a little bit different. But look at the, yeah, the model in the front here says the same thing actually. You can see it's ATU-100, okay? So they're both the ATU-100 automatic antenna tuners. Let's do a, a, front, a top to bottom comparison of these things. And you can see where they made it a little different. And the only thing they really made different is it looks like the screen size is a little bigger on the battery one than the other one, okay? This one just has power on and a reset, but this one also includes, as I said, the battery switch or you can switch to line. So you can use the internal battery or the line itself. Now, something else, and Guzizu, when you watch this, this is just a tip, because I know they watch the review videos, uh, because I've spoken to them quite a few times on, uh, you know, the antennas and stuff I reviewed for them. The one thing I noticed with the powered one that is not on the battery one, let's look at the back. Okay, we're going to do a back comparison here. Again, <clears throat> the powered one's on the top, and on the bottom, we have the one with the battery. Now, I think the, way, the reason this is, is because there's a fuse in here. I don't see a fuse in here. It might be inside the case. I didn't open them up, and I'm not going to do that part, okay? They both got the um, SO239s on them, right? So we got uh, transmitter and your antenna, transmitter and antenna. Now, what I like about this top one, the, the one you have to power that's not on the battery, and I hope Gazizu will listen to this and see this, we can actually take a random wire and put it right on here. Okay, You can put a random wire on there. You can throw a counterpoise on here. All right, That's what this is for. You can also use a banana plug and just plug a wire in right there, and that way you don't even need the antenna coax. <clears throat> All it's going to do is run off of your wire. I really really like that. I think that's awesome. Also on the back that some people have missed uh, when they did a review on this thing is there's a little button. Why is it on the back? I don't know. Couldn't tell you why they put it on the back and not the front, but it is, and that's fine. All it says is automatic or manual. Manual mode is simply going to bypass the tuner. Automatic, well no, I'm sorry, manual mode you have to hit the button to tune. There. Automatic is just what it says. The way you see that, and I can't turn this one on, there's a little dot right at the top. You'll see it come on and off. Just press that button a couple times and you'll notice it. There's a little dot on the top that's going to come on and off. So manual is you have to hold the button in to tune. Automatic is it's going to automatically tune. But like I said again, this one that you have to put power to, I really like it because of this. Okay. Oh, the voltage is on the back says 12 volt DC at 5 amps is what they're claiming it needs. 12 volts at 5 amps, okay? The 9 volt battery is just my test. It has nothing to do with Gazizu. They didn't recommend it for sure. I'm just going to see if it works, okay? So that's this one. That's, this is the one that you power. This is the least expensive one. So, and I don't know what it was coming in at. I'll put the price right here on the video. And again, the link will be in the description below if you want to buy these things. Okay, that's, again, the one that you need the power for, okay? So we'll call this powered, powered ATU-100. This one we're going to call the battery ATU-100 because it has a built-in battery. It is, if you lift them, it is a little heavier because there is a battery in there, so it's a little heavier for you to carry around than this one is. But on the back of this one, you'll notice there's nowhere to put a wire antenna. Okay, it just won't work on here. So you're going to have to come off of this thing with some kind of coax to come in to actually set this antenna up. Because I think because they put the fuse there. Now this has an auto switch. So again, you can go to auto or there's a button. You can go to manual. Okay. Auto manual. But what they've also included with this one is, if you can see it right here, is a bypass button. The bypass button, obviously just what it says, it bypasses the tuner. Why would you want to do that, Jack? That's just weird because then you can use it as a watt meter. Okay, it'll show your output wattage 
as well as, uh, I know that one showed the input wattage. I have not set this one up to use it yet, but the other one did show the input wattage and output wattage to see what you're pushing out, all right? So both of the tuners are rated for 100 watts, so they can both be used with your standard home uh, base station, as long as you're not pushing any power through it. That is what I'm probably setting this one up for. The powered one, I'll probably set this up on my home station. But I also do like the random wire. I think we're going to try that out in the field one day. We're going to put a random wire on here just to see how it reacts and how it works. Again, this one is really nice for portable use because of that built-in battery feature. I really like that. Um, I don't know how long the battery lasts. There is a reset button that you can hit to reset these tuners. Both of them have the same button. But both of these tuners are very well built for the money. You can't, and again, uh, Gazizu actually sent these to me. I'm not, you know, by any means, uh, talking them up for the company. They told me I'll do honest reviews on these things, but I can tell you what, listen. They're both solid metal cases. Here's the other one. Both solid metal cases, so they're really, really well built. I just noticed that the powered one has rubber feet on the bottom. This does come with rubber feet. They're right there, so I'm gonna I'll put those on. Okay, so you can add your rubber feet. I probably added these already, maybe. I don't know. So is us have rubber feet that we can put on the bottom and we will do that, okay? So again, I have not set the tuners up and used them as of yet. What I think I'm gonna to do today is thinking about throwing a random wire up in the tree, but I don't know if I have enough coax to get back in here to bring the G90 down to see, uh, you know, both of these tuned. But I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and I'm sure they tuned. But again, uh, Guzizu wanted the side-by-side -side comparisons, what I wanted to do, okay? Again, as I said, I'm going to bring these back up to this camera here. As I said, the, the powered one that you have to add your own power to is cheaper or lower priced, obviously, than the one with the built-in battery. But they both have very, very practical applications. If you're using a random wire out in the field, and I use a lot of random wires, you can take the antenna tuner again. You can even use it with, you can just put it on here. I probably would not. I like to get my antenna coax further away from the radio as possible. But you could do it. You can put it on here set this thing up and tune a random wire antenna. A lot of you guys also, and I watch a lot of other people's videos and talk to a lot of hams out there, also have the random wire antennas on your house. I started out that way. I put a random wire on my house based on Walt. Uh, Walt was showing a video of how to use a nine to one with a random wire. So I just strung it out my window and I made a lot of contacts on that. Now, do I use tuners? Well, there's one instance, but the ICOM 7300 has a built-in tuner itself, so I do use that. Also, the G90 has a built-in tuner, and I do use that. What I was hoping to use these things for is for the QMX, because the QMX does not have a built-in tuner. That would allow me to use a random wire. Now, let's go with the transparency side of things, because I told you guys I'm always transparent on my videos. The actual part of the videos where I go out and I've been using commercial grade antennas. I've been using uh, Guzizu's antennas. You've seen the JPC-7 and the JPC-12. The JPC-7, I am truly in love with that antenna, guys. I, I can't say enough about it. It's one of those antennas that, you know, you can put up. You, you, yeah, you do need a light stand, but you don't need any trees. You don't need any ropes. It sits up relatively quickly. I'll put a link at the end of this video to show you my time setup of that antenna. It doesn't take you long, and I'm even quicker now at it because I've been doing it quite a few times. I've made amazing contacts with that antenna, and it's nice because you can actually take that and just loosen the light pole and just turn the antenna so you can turn the elements whichever way you want them. It's hard to do that when your wire's in the tree. So yeah, I have been using resonant antennas as far as, you know, tuning them with my 
rig expert or with my um, nano VNA. So I've been tuning those antennas and I'm getting pretty quick at it. So I think Mike said it one time, Mike from a ham radio, is it ham radio tube? Yeah, Mike. He said it one time too. He said, the more you do something, the more efficient and quicker you'll be at it. So I do like my resin antennas, but I also love building antennas. And when you build antennas with a lot of the different variations that we have, you're going to need to have a tuner. Okay, one or the other, but you're going to need a tuner, especially if you're building random wire antennas. I know you guys have seen me build a couple of antennas that are resonant antennas, right? I built dipoles and you cut them down and you guys know how that works. So, so anyway, I just wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Which one would I buy if I was buying one? To be honest with you, even though as much as I like the idea of the wire in the back, it's not something I would probably use. Because again, I like to get my antenna further away from the transmitter than being right here. It would be nice to have. But if I had to buy one, guys, I would buy the one with the built-in battery. Because now we don't have to worry about powering this thing in the field. If you want to and you have the power, by all means, you can put power to it, right? Again, it says DC 12 volts. It is fused. So you could put power to it, but you have the luxury of having that built-in battery. Uh, the weight's a little bit more, but it's not a lot more. Not a lot to really kill you and knock you out. So, again, if I had to buy one of the tuners, the AT100s, I would vote for the battery one. If I was buying this from my home shack, then I would buy the powered one because you're going to save a little bit of money. You're still getting all the features and you have power at your house. So why wouldn't you do that? Guys, I hope this video was informative. I hope it was something that you can use. Again, uh, thank you to Gozizu for sending me these tuners out to review for you to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I want to run a random wire today. I don't know where I'll run it at here at the house. And bring some coax in here somehow because it is cold. Obviously, you heard I got the antenna. I mean, the, the antenna. I got the heater running. So I don't want the door to hang open. But maybe I can figure out something here to get a, a wire up and we can hook this up to the G90 today and see how it does. Uh, I'll shut the G90's internal tuner off and just strictly use the ATU 100. So I do want to do another review again with the random wire. So, all right, but I hope this video helped you out. Guys, if you're not subscribed to these videos, why aren't you, man? Click that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate the kick be around here. To all the subscribers out there, it's been uh, hitting the channel up and subscribing. Man, thank you so much. You really built a great community and I really enjoy each and every one of you. I know I've talked to a lot of you on the air. I do primarily 99.9% .9 of the time do CW, so I know we don't get in long conversations about any of the videos, but I understand your calls. If you comment on my videos, maybe put that in there. And I do that when I comment on YouTube videos uh, for ham radio operators. Put on at the end of it DE and give me your call sign. That way, if I hear you on air, I'll at least know that, hey, you've, you've seen my videos, and that's great. If you just found the videos from QRZ, welcome aboard. I appreciate you being here. And again, click that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. I would truly appreciate that. And guys, I never see anybody hit the bell notification. Click on that too. My videos are normally released every Tuesday is my primary release date now. Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And occasionally I will release videos on Friday if I have an overload of videos and I have stuff that I want to push out there to you guys. I will do that on Fridays. But always expect to see them on Tuesdays. It's going to be my normal day. Again, thank you so much for watching. This is Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango, W3CT, your good old friend Jack. This is my ham radio journey. Guys, I hope to catch everybody on the airways. Take care, 73s, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.